into it whilst people are joining the session. So welcome to Reboot. My name is Kelly Slesser and I'm delighted to be hosting this event to you, uh, brought to you by the City of Sydney. Before we start, I want to acknowledge the Gadigal people of the Eora Nation, traditional owners of the land, and pay my respects to elders past, present and emerging as well as acknowledging that we are all here today on different lands and so acknowledge the traditional owners of all the lands from wherever you join us today. And it's always a privilege and an honor for me to do so. Um, if this is your first reboot session, although I can see some, some repeat, repeat people, um, if this is your first session, welcome, welcome. You're in for one of the best sessions yet. Um, Reboot is a series of nine free business webinars developed in response to the pandemic to support businesses recover, rebuild and engage and grow your customers and your revenue. Um, these are weekly masterclasses full of knowledge and insights and tips and tricks and hacks with some of Australia's leading business experts. Um, and they're going to share knowledge on things like digital, which I covered last week. Um, we've got Taryn today on influencers, branding, storytelling, purpose building, um, just a phenomenal lineup of speakers. So I'm, I'm excited. We're, we're, in, we're in week three um, and we've got a total of nine to go. So if you haven't watched the first two, you can watch the recordings um, and if you miss any, make sure you sign up because you will also get the recordings. They're all recorded, as I said, and follow up in the EDMs are sent during the week with a link to the recordings and the session. So make sure even if you can't make it for whatever reason, you sign up so that you can. Um, at the end of the session, we're going to post a chat link to a survey, which we'd love for you all to fill out. What's really important is that you are getting value out of these. And I don't say that lightly. I, you know, I don't turn up just to be here or to present or to talk or to sit with amazing people like Karen and get to ask questions. Um, I truly turn up and I know that the City of Sydney have put this on to give you value. So please, please, please fill in the surveys and let us know whether you're getting that value, what you'd like to see more of, less of, or how we can improve. Um, there will be a link in the chat for you. It will only take two minutes. Um, at the end of the session, there will be Q. So if you um, if you would like to ask a question, please put it in the Q&A, not in the chat. If you put it in the chat, Rachel, the amazing Rachel and the amazing Selby have to copy and paste it over to the Q&A. So please put it in the Q&A and then we will field the questions from there. And I'm sure there's going to be loads today. So without further ado, I would like to introduce Taryn Williams, and I'm super excited. Taryn is the award-winning CEO and founder of Wink Models. The Right Fit, The Influencer Agency, and hashtag gifted. God, you've done a hell of a lot. And you look like 16 as well. Oh, that's it's amazing. Fun. Your skin's amazing. A digital influencer, Taryn works with global brands as an ambassador, appears extensively in media, and is a keynote speaker and a board member of a variety of companies from AI, food tech, SaaS business, and not-for-profit. She is also super smart as you can tell. She's gonna be covering today how to build brand awareness, how to create and use influencers, um, you know, and how to, how to really manage and monitor them. So I'm actually gonna hand over to Taryn and sit and listen today um, before I get into my questions. So Taryn, thank you so much for joining us. Oh, thank you for having me. It's always such a pleasure to catch up and chat with you. And, and I love doing these things. So I'm really excited and really excited to chat to you all and, and go through Q&As as well later. Um, I get so much satisfaction out of hearing other people's business problems and, and so many of them I've lived myself. So really looking forward to it. I'm um, just quickly, I'm curious, just in the chat, can you please let me know if you have used as a business, if you have used influencers before? I'd love to know if you've used them before. Just type yes in the chat. Yes, David has. No. Yes, the right fit is amazing. Awesome. Yes, yes, yes. Awesome. No, not yet. No, too scared. All right, Claire, we're going to fix that today. Yes, gifted and paid. Awesome. Magda's no, kind of. All right, awesome. Okay, let's hand off to Taryn because I know That's you're going to get so much value off this. I'm going to shut up 
I'm going to ship out. I'm going to let you go. <laughs> All right, let's get into it. Um, now, I got a little bit carried away making this presentation and it got a little bit longer than it was probably supposed to be. So I am going to try and whip through it as quickly as I can today. Um, and I promise we'll have time at the end for Q&A. So a um, little bit about me. Um, I started my career as a talent myself, so I model um, influencer. And I launched my first business, Wink Models, which is a full service um, modeling agency and uh, talent agency. So we also represent celebrities and speakers and influencers and content creators um, about 17 years ago now. Um, and I ended up falling in love with technology because I built an end-to-end -end onboarding calendar management and payroll integration tool for that business, um, which sounds very boring, but I absolutely loved it. Um, and which is what sort of birthed the idea for my second business, which is the right fit which is a two-sided marketplace. Think of it very much like an Airtasker or an Upwork, but for all different kinds of creative talent, models, actors, influencers, photographers. On the back of that, I started another business called the Influencers Agency, which was a full service influencer um, marketing agency. So if you wanted to do an influencer campaign, you didn't quite know where to start, um, we would be able to help you with that. I've actually just exited both of those businesses. So I've sold them to an international group, um, The Right Fit and the Influencers Agency. And my new baby is a business called Hash Gifted, which is about to launch in two weeks' time. We're just in beta at the moment. So you can sign up and have a play. It's totally free, so a good time to be using it. And it's all about contra gifting uh, to influencers um, in exchange for UGC or testimonials or written reviews. Um, so a fun new little project. So um, I put this slide in here um, just to say, you may have seen me around. Sometimes it's just the short blonde hair. I was like, I've seen that girl before. But I put it in here because I want to show that I've been through the journey that you're all going through too. I've had to start my own businesses. I've had to scale them. I've had to secure press. I've had to work with influencers myself. Um, and so I really know firsthand the challenges of growing and scaling a business. Uh, so one of the reasons that I started The Right Fit and Hash Gifted was um, this shift in digital ad spend. So it was growing at such an exponential rate. And I think this graph here is like, so. Look at, when you look at this, like traditional ad spend versus digital ad spend is just insane now. And obviously social is a huge part of that. It's far surpassed traditional TV advertising. And it's going to be a $13 billion industry as at the end of last year. Like it's just insane. So Obviously, I know most of you are coming to these sessions because you want to really get um, informed on how to do digital really well. Um, obviously, Kelly's the expert in all of this as well. Um, and obviously, social media influences, content creators, and social channels are a huge part of that. Now, I put this in because I think it gives you a really interesting snapshot of the different social media networks and so many that we often forget about. Things like Reddit, I know I never think of when we talk about social media influencers. And that there's all of these platforms out there that we probably don't always consider. So I just wanted us to think really holistically today when we think about influencer marketing and some of the channels that we might be able to use to promote your businesses. Um, and when we're thinking, where is going to be the best platform? Where are we going to find our key target audiences? But also just looking at the prevalence of these different key platforms um, and trying to think about which one is going to be right for your brand and how can you build a strategy for each of these different platforms that is really going to add value to your potential target audience. So when we talk about influencers, I think that there's this a bit of a negative connotation. Um, you might have heard them referred to before as key opinion leaders, which I like much better as a term. It's genuine, generally what they're called um, in sort of Southeast Asia. KOLs, um, you might have heard that term before, but really an influencer is anyone who can affect the decision of others. So I don't want us to get caught in this sort of negative connotation about influencers just being pretty girls on Instagram, posting really curated photos. Let's try and think really holistically and sort of have a really open mind when we talk about who could be the person who influences the buying or purchasing decision of the people that I'm trying to speak to. I'll whip through this really quickly. Um, I'm sure we can send this presentation around later. Um, but just, I wanted to touch on some of the stats in influencer marketing because I really do think that it's really hard to get stats like this in any other kind of marketing channel. So 71% of consumers are more likely to make a purchase based on a social media recommendation. Like that is insane. I don't know where you would see any other kind of conversion rate um, or purchasing based decision based um, on, on another channel like that. So um, I just wanted to, for anyone who's been like, I know someone was just saying before, I want to try it, but I'm too scared. I wanted to sort of say it, it is, 
yes, I know it can be daunting, but it can be incredibly effective. Um, and hopefully by the end of the session today, we've, we've demystified it a little bit for you as well. So why are brands shifting towards influencer marketing? Um, obviously, of course, the, the advent of these social media channels that we simply didn't have before is a big part of it. But also, there, obviously, you, pr you probably mostly know um, that there was a big iOS update probably about two or three years ago now, two years probably. Um, and you would have seen the massive decline in Facebook's share price because of it. And you would have all seen it personally when you open an app and it says, do you want to allow us to track you on this app? And it says, allow always, allow never. Um, basically, it has really decreased the performance, especially of Facebook ads, um, but of a lot of online remarketing and retargeting because we simply can't track you across the internet anymore. We can't put cookies on all of your browsers. And so what it means is that brands are now trying to find first party data, access to, to audiences and communities online where they can get those conversion rates. So you probably, well, some of you remember, I'm old. I feel like I remember the day you used to put $10 into the Facebook marketing machine and it would spit out $100 worth of sales and you could just keep feeding the beast. And unfortunately, it doesn't work like that anymore. So influencer marketing is a really fantastic way to find those curated audiences that you want to speak to. So um, if you're looking for, if you're looking for a B2B decision maker, well, then maybe LinkedIn is the platform for you. If you're looking for a younger demographic, maybe TikTok is the platform for you. So you can really find those key audiences and you can find those people who already have an interest in your kind of product or your industry or a service that you provide. So it's something that um, has definitely grown in, in interest and in prevalence um, because of these iOS tracking changes. So who are influencers? I wanted to keep this really broad because I wanted us to really come with that mindset that it's not just social media influencers. Obviously, that's sort of what we're going to dig into mostly today. But I wanted you to think really broadly about journalists and influencers, um, channel experts, so people who are channel expert on LinkedIn, for example, um, long-form bloggers, people who write long-form content, obviously social media influencers, own employees, which is a big one that people forget about, which we'll talk a little bit about later. Um, business leaders, athletes, there's so many more things. So when we talk about influencers today, try and keep an open mind, um, but we will obviously dig into each of the platforms as well. This is the key one for me about why I think brands should engage in influencer marketing. It really helps you build that trust. Of course, we would love to believe that consumers will listen to us. And if we say, my product is fantastic or my service is fantastic, you should buy it. The consumers would go, okay, I trust Taryn that her product is fantastic. But unfortunately, we don't trust brands. We do trust a little bit more the people behind brands. So I think, you know, Apple was a fantastic uh, example of that. You know, when we felt like we understood Steve Jobs and we trusted him and we believed him. Um, it's why you probably see a lot of brands using um, faces of the business and having um, PR agencies represent their business leaders and things like that. But it's really hard for brands to build trust in this day and age. And influencers really help you do that. Um, having that trusted voice of authority, that person advocating on your behalf, really does build trust for your brand. So it's incredibly beneficial and really hard to do any other way. So I wanted us again to think really broadly about the kind of content that we could be making using influencers. And some of the things that people probably don't think about necessarily when, they, when influencer marketing first comes to mind. So influencers can do all of these things. And it always annoys me when people sort of speak negatively about influencers because I'm like, they're actually like little mini media powerhouses, you know, they're the producer, they're the editor, they're the script writer, they're the creative director, they're the talent, you know, they do so much if you find a great one, of course, you know, uh, I'm not saying all influencers are created equal, but there's so many things that you could be doing, using them to write long form blog content um, to increase your SEO um, you can get them to make content for you, just user-generated content, images and videos that you can use for your own online advertising or to post on your own social channels. Obviously, things to post on their channels like Instagram Reels and Stories, TikTok videos, YouTube Shorts, you know, that's another one that I barely see any brands engaging with these days. Um, podcasts, LinkedIn articles are hugely beneficial, LinkedIn video as well. Um, getting them to co-author white papers with you that you can then use as gated content. They can promote to their audience saying, hey, download my ebook on the top five ways to grow your business, for example. 
you can obviously have an ebook that features your business if you were a B2B business as an example. So there's so many things that you could be doing using influencers. So I just wanted you to take some of those away and, and think in your business, what could be relevant for us? Apart from just having, obviously having them post on their own social channels, TikTok or YouTube, um, what can I have them work on that's sort of above and beyond those sort of basics? I guess the big one I always get asked by brands is like, where do I start? Well, we know we want to do influence marketing. We know we should be doing it. We see all the stats. We hear it's really important, but what do, where do I even start? What's the first thing I should do? And I always say to brands like, well, what is the reason that you want to do influence marketing? Is it to generate brand awareness? Is it a repositioning piece? Are you, you know, trying to reposition how your brand is perceived? Um, is it, obviously everyone says, well, I just want to sell more things. And I'm like, well, of course that's part of it. But, you know, there's much more to that objective. Is it that we want to create really fantastic video content because we don't do it well as a brand? Is it that we want to reach new audiences? So once you start to get into the real nitty gritty of what it is that you're trying to achieve, it's much easier to figure out the next steps from there in terms of what platform is going to be right and what influence is going to be right. Who are you trying to target? And again, you know, any... Um, any business will go through this of going, well, you know, we want to speak to all people. Our, our customer base is anyone between the ages of 18 and 45. And we all know that's not realistic with any marketing campaign, you know, whether it's online or offline. You've got to get so much more targeted than that. And if you haven't done personas for your business, I would highly recommend doing it and really making every strategic decision in your business about whether or not it serves those key target personas that you're trying to speak to. We name ours in all of my businesses and they have the actual names, you know, this is Ben, this is where he lives, this is where he works, this is what he's interested in, this is where he spends his time, this is, you know, um, where he hangs out on the weekends. And so when we go to do an influencer campaign, we go, okay, well, we know this is exactly who we're trying to speak to. This marketing manager, who's this age, who does these things. And it makes it so much easier for us to decide who we're trying to target. We know exactly who they are. And so then we know, well, what channel is going to be relevant to them? What, what places are they consuming content? And I do always remind people that whilst they have a, um, you know, in our case, we're a B2B business, they have a, a job to be done. They're, they're a business person, but they're also a human at the end of the day as well. So whilst Kelly is, you know, in a fantastic business owner and, and um, you know, maybe online on LinkedIn consuming information, she's also probably scrolling on Instagram at nights, you know, consuming content that way. So Think about how you can cross-populate those different platforms in different ways to appeal to those target consumers. And then think about the messaging across those different platforms. The big key one that I see people miss is how can I add value? Social media is not advertising. And I think this is where the big disconnect is. And you would all see it when you see a bad influencer campaign and you can't put your finger on what's wrong with it, but it just feels like, oof. It's when the brand is not saying, how can I add value? So when we talk about adding value, it can be things like, is this entertaining? Is it informative? Is it engaging? What am, what am I um, doing to add value to that person's life who's just watched my piece of content? So a good example could be, I'm a fitness brand. And instead of just having an influencer post, I'm wearing this activewear um, brand from this, this fitness company. Maybe I could have them provide a short um, workout that people can do at home when they've got children. That adds value to that person's life. I can watch that and I can say, I'm your target audience. I'm receiving this piece of content. It's helpful to me. It gives me positive brand sentiment about your company and it's added value to my life. It's not just you telling me, buy something like my brand. And then you can go, who is the right influencer that can help me add that value? And who is a key opinion leader or voice of authority in that space? So once you do all of those first things, it becomes so evident who that right person is, who that influencer is, who's going to be able to add value, who can really speak as a voice of authority in that space. So hopefully those things are, are helpful. So some things to ask once you've sort of started maybe nutting out a little short list of people that you want to work with. A few things that we think you should ask before you get started. So have they worked with a competitor? And that is not always a problem. So for example, we work with a huge number of beauty brands. They don't necessarily mind that um, last week this influencer was promoting a, this particular brand of lipstick and then this week they're promoting another brand of lipstick. That's totally fine. 
obviously other times it would seem very odd if all of a sudden I was saying last week I loved Optus but this week I loved Telstra you'd see like oh that's not doesn't feel very authentic so making sure that you have those conversations with the creator having a deep dive through their feed and seeing what other products they've promoted do they feel like their values align with yours then being really really clear about what content you want created and on what channels and whether or not you've got the rights to use it on your channels as well because it's not necessarily a given that you also can use it on yours so really making a list of, I want an in-feed post, or I want a carousel, or I want a TikTok video, or I want YouTube shorts, um, giving them a bit of a brief. And the more information you can give to creators or influencers, the better. So don't assume that they know anything about your brand. Don't assume that they know anything about your values, your tone of voice, your, in, your creative vision. The more information you can give them, the better they can do at bringing your brand to life. And the best thing you can do with a creator is tell them what success looks like to you. Don't forget that they're the experts in this space. They do this all day, every day with lots of different brands. And so if you say to them, hey, what I'm really trying to achieve, I really want more newsletter signups, or I really want to capture more email addresses so that I can market to them. Then they might come back to you and say, hey, actually, the best way to do that is through a competition. We did one just recently with this brand and it worked really well and they managed to capture this number of leads and I could do it this way and we could do some reels and then we could do some stories and I could also repurpose it on TikTok and they can help you come up with that. So if you can give them all of the vision of your brand, the creative brief, all of those um, tone of voice documents, things that are going to help them really deeply understand your brand, they can help you with achieving that success that you're looking for. A really important one is getting clear on what the approval process is that you want to go through. Are you happy for them to just post straight away without approval? Or would you like to approve all the content before it goes live? If so, what's the turnaround time? If you give it, if they give it to you on Monday, are you going to be able to turn it around in 24 hours so they can post it while it's still relevant? You know, if it was raining outside on that day, then you know, you don't want them posting on a sunny day that says, oh, it's not raining anymore and it's showing rain in this video. So really thinking through, through those things. And then down to things like, how do you want them to respond to cost, like customer inquiries or questions on their channel? Do you want them to respond? Are you going to respond on their behalf? Um, just making sure that you have those conversations with the creator before you get started. So everyone's always confused about the KPIs of influencer marketing. And obviously, it's not as simple as going, this person did a post about my product on whatever channel or a podcast or this. And then we saw this uptick in sales. It's not always, it's not a straight line, unfortunately. We all wish it was. But there's certain, certainly some things that you can look at that can tell you whether or not it has been successful. So things that you'd want to be looking for are reach. And you can get these directly from influencers. They can provide this to you, screenshots directly from the platform, Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, all of them, LinkedIn. Uh, so how many people did the content reach? How many people actually saw it? And then how many people engaged with that piece of content? And that can be things like comments, likes, sticker taps, shares. All of those things are really important. The quality of the content, obviously, in an ideal world, when you're working with an influencer, you want to be able to repurpose that content for other uses. So instead of just letting it die on one channel, just on their channel, you want to be able to repurpose that. Maybe you want to include it in your newsletters. Maybe you want to be able to reshare it on your LinkedIn or on your TikTok. Um, so the quality of the content is really important. One thing that I always feel like people miss is brand sentiment. And what I mean by this is when you go on to, the, to let's just use Instagram as an example, you go onto the post on Instagram, have a read through what people are saying about that post. Are they saying, wow, that looks really fantastic. I'm so interested in this. Does it come in other sizes? Or do you know if this product's gluten-free, I'm gluten intolerant? Or are they just saying things like nice photo or cool? You really want to find people who have got such an engaged audience. It's also really informative for me for, from a brand research perspective to go, oh, gosh, like look at the questions that people are asking or look at what they're interested in. Or maybe they're saying, oh, I tried this before and it didn't work for me. So it's a really informative piece um, to do. We always recommend to brands as well to go and respond to all of those comments um, from your brand page as well. So if someone says, oh, I'd really love to try this, you know, it sounds really interesting say, hey, you know, we'd love to have you, you know, please get in touch. Let us know if there's anything we can do with helping you sign up or, you know, I can see you're based in Queensland. Here's your local stockists. All of those little things, going that extra 110% really makes a difference um, in building community. So now into each of the social channels, because I know lots of people have questions about, oh, should I use Instagram? What about TikTok? What are the different algorithms? So 
I want to go through these really, really quickly. Um, but Instagram, obviously, I'm sure you've all used for your businesses. Um, it obviously has a very broad audience. Um, the average user spends 29 minutes per day on there. So you do need to cut through. It's not a long time. It's not a long session time. So I always talk about on any platform, thumb stopping content. We all know that content that just makes us go, wow, I want to read this. I want to click on it. I want to see more about it. I want to watch this reel or I want to plus out the, the caption and see what this person's talking about. So you get on any platform now, you get seconds to capture someone's attention. So, um, and Instagram is definitely one of those platforms. Like any platform, whenever um, any social media platform releases a new feature, so for example, on LinkedIn, it's video at the moment. Um, on Instagram, they're obviously heavily pushing reels. If you don't use that feature, you're, you will be penalized. So what that means is obviously Instagram goes, hey, we really want everyone to use this, this feature that we've released. We're obviously competing with TikTok. We really want you to use reels and we really want you to make video. If you don't, we won't show the rest of your posts and the rest of your page to as many people on social media. So it's a really important reason to try these new features. I know they can seem scary and intimidating, but they're not. So give it a try. If you haven't done Reels before, please make sure you try them. It's a great reason to work with influencers as well who are fantastic at making video content like Reels and they know all the amazing editing um, techniques. They know what works. So um, it is really important because it will the algorithm will penalize your other posts if you don't. One thing, and this applies to all social platforms, social media is called social for a reason. It is a conversation. It is not an advertising channel, as I said before. So don't post and ghost. Don't just schedule all your posts in a scheduling tool and have them go out and never come back and reply to customers or never build any community. You need to be active on the platform. And again, the platforms will penalize you if you don't. So don't just log in or have your social media person log in post the content on social media, log out and switch back to your personal account. Worst thing you can do. You want to post the content and then you want to go through it and you want to engage with people, not just on your post, not just on what you've shared, but on their posts, on what they're interested in, on what other brands are sharing, on what other potential customers are sharing. Um, make sure you're going through and engaging with the platform how it was designed to be used, which is as a social platform. Um, Instagram is obviously a more curated style of content, um, can, especially compared to um, Snapchat or TikTok. So think about that when you're looking at the type of influencers you would use and the type of content you would use. And again, this is something to think about for all of the platforms. Think about the customer journey. So on your own page, you can have shoppable links. So um, if you're posting content on your own platform, you can definitely use shoppable links and make that one step to check out so much easier. When you're using influencers, it's not that easy. So think about if I'm a consumer and I'm scrolling through and I see this influencer has promoted this brand, let's say HelloFresh, for example, what is the next thing I'm likely to do? I'm probably going to click on the tag and go through to HelloFresh's Instagram page. And I'm probably going to want to see more information there about how much it costs maybe or where the, where the options are of delivery. And then I'm probably going to click the link in their bio to get the information I want on their website and convert as a customer. So think about how you can make that journey as seamless as possible. So for example, if I am HelloFresh and this influencer is promoting this new vegan kit that they've just released, I want to be able to click through. I want to be able to see that information really quickly on their own feed. What's in the vegan kit? What does it include? How much does it cost? And I want to be able to click straight through from the link in their bio. And you can use platforms like Linktree to be able to create multiple links in bio. I want to be able to click straight through and straight through to that um, offer immediately. So really think about that. Think about how you use your story highlights as well um, to make that discover that discoverability even easier too. TikTok, I'm sure we've all heard about the huge growth, um, obviously partly generated um, by us all being in lockdown and having time to, to learn a new platform and create lots of video and looking for new ways to engage with people. There are about 3 million users in Australia now. Um, it does skew younger, as I'm sure you're probably all aware, but that doesn't mean that it is not all 16 to 24 year olds. There are certainly, we're now working with a lot of brands who are using TikTok, mainly because of the incredible reach you can get um, on TikTok compared to other platforms. Um, and that is because the algorithm is unique. You don't just see content from people that you are following. You would all have heard of the For You feed. You see content that the algorithm, as it learns about you and the things that you like and the things that you're interested in, it will display you content from lots of different people, not just the people that you follow and not just influencers with a high reach. So a piece of content can go viral and receive millions of views, even though that person may only have 
5,000 followers, which would just, it does, doesn't happen on any other social platform. So it's worth experimenting with just for that reason. One thing I would say, and this again is relevant for all channels, but particularly with TikTok, is understand the subculture before you engage. So spend time on TikTok, understanding what your target audience was, is doing on there, the type of content they make. Is it duets? Um, you know, really understanding that what is going to resonate with them before you just start making content and sharing content or you start briefing influencers and getting them to create particular types of content. So really spend some time understanding the subculture. Each platform does have its own subculture. So you really do need to understand that, and especially the one that's relevant for your target audience. YouTube gets more visits every day than Facebook or Instagram. So it's definitely one that's uh, worth keeping in mind. I think the, the, the one thing about YouTube that everyone finds probably a little bit overwhelming is it does require more time investment in terms of crafting a story. It's longer form storytelling. So you do need to really think about how am I going to script this? What kind of content do I want the creator to make? Um, obviously, it's generally long form video. Um, you do have YouTube shorts now, which are up to 60 seconds. So that's a really great way to dabble in, in using um, YouTube influencers, and they can be incredibly affordable when you're just doing YouTube shorts. Um, so I understand that it can be a little bit more intimidating and it may not be right for every brand, um, especially if you're just, you know, dabbling in, in social media influencers to start with, but it is an incredible channel. Um, it's great for long form storytelling. You can see 51% of YouTube visitors visit the platform daily and three times more people are likely to watch a tutorial video than read instructions. So if your product is something that you want people to understand how to use, if it requires some explaining, I'll use, you know, a beauty product. Obviously, beauty is huge on YouTube. If you want someone to be able to explain the in-depth parts of your product, maybe what the ingredients are, what the ingredients do, how they impact the skin, why it's safe to sleep in, any of those sort of information, then YouTube is a fantastic way to do that that you just can't really achieve on any other platform. LinkedIn is one that everyone forgets about. Um, I think it's a fantastic platform. Um, influencers obviously are usually a byproduct of expertise. So you can see how many followers someone has on LinkedIn, um, but it is a fantastic platform to use, especially if you're looking for B2B decision makers. And you should really jump in and have a look at the new features they've got, like uh, videos as well, um, articles, essays. You can search by hashtags. So really fantastic and definitely really good to do as part of a broader strategy um, and campaign for authenticity as well. Podcast is one that everyone forgets about as well and uh, a hugely popular way. Um, I don't know if anyone here listens to podcasts, but um, you'll see brands like Athletic Greens who get incredible return on investment from their um, podcast sponsorships and using podcast influencers. Um, it's predominantly a uh, slightly more educated and um, higher disposable income audience as well. So fantastic if that's your target audience. It does lean slightly male. Um, and 85% of podcast listeners say they listen to an all or a long part of all of the episodes. So there, it's a really engaged community and audience, which I think is really important as well if you're looking for those really highly engaged audiences. Pinterest. Another one that everyone forgets when we talk about influence marketing. Now, Pinterest influencers can be brands, they can be publishers, or they can be individual people. Um, Pinterest refers 7% of the world's referral traffic, which is insane. And it's the second largest search engine next to Google. So if you have a product, homewares are particularly popular on, on Pinterest. Um, so if you have a visual, and they also have video now as well on Pinterest. So you can do short form video. So it's a fantastic way um, to generate sales. And the average order value, again, as you can see here, is higher than it is on Facebook. So really important when you're looking at that cost to acquire a customer and the lifetime value of a customer. I won't go into these. We can circulate these later because I know we're getting short on time, but some stats in here. Um, and when you're thinking about measuring your goals, these are the things that we think are really important to think about when you're looking at using influencer marketing. Is it about boosting brand awareness? Of course, everyone says it's about sales, but is it about boosting brand awareness? Are they going to be able to help you reach new audiences that you previously haven't been engaged with? And if it is, then you're looking for things like reach, you're looking for impressions, you're looking for new followers, you're looking for video views. If it's about consideration, getting people to go that next step down the funnel, then you're looking for things like clicks, link clicks, comments, likes, shares, traffic to your website. Obviously, increasing conversions, that's what we all want. Growing customer loyalty. So this is one that people often don't think about, but can you use influencers 
to make your existing user base even more loyal. So if I already use your product, but I see this top celebrity using it and promoting it, or I see someone that I really admire promoting it, that's going to make me go, wow, I've made a really great purchasing decision. I'm going to keep using this brand. That's validation for me that I'm doing the right thing. And can I use them to create UGC for me to use for other channels? Some of the things that you should be looking in, uh, do we need to wrap, Kel? Yes. Yeah. Yes, yeah, yeah, so we can get the case study on. Look, this is um, so much great information here. My mind's blown. I'm sat here going, oh my goodness, I hadn't really thought about that. And I, I was actually thinking about, um, I got a flat tire in a petrol station late at night, petrol station was closed and I ended up YouTubing how to change the flat tire. So that you, we, we <laughs> constantly, we really do. And I actually did in heels as well. So go me. Anyway, oh. we really do forget about YouTube as a as an influencer channel um i think some of the gold bits that i pulled out of there that i think are really valuable are the responding to people because i've seen so many people use influencers that then they post a bit of content for them and people will comment in the in the you know in the comment sections and, and no one responds to them it's yeah. just a like and it's like that's an opportunity for your you as a brand to engage with the users so i think that was a gold one conversion engagement as well looking at people's um instagram accounts or whatever accounts it, it might be to look at what's the propensity for them to actually convert are people talking about the product where they can get it what colors are, are you know they like or are they just kind of as you said just kind of a high five you know great i love that beautiful um so are you know the influencers you're picking are they actually getting engaged kind of converting customers on their channels is another one um, and then customer journey. I'm all about personas and I'm all about customer journeys. So I love the fact that you think through the customer journey as opposed to we're just going to stick a bit of content here and, and see what the results are, which is gold. All right. I've got a couple of questions and then we're going to bring Mandy and Anthony on. So my, my questions are my first one. This is all fair and well for product businesses, but have you seen service businesses? I run an e-commerce coaching course. We've got accountants on, we've got lawyers, gyms. Have you seen service businesses use this effectively? Absolutely, absolutely. Um, definitely works for service businesses and works for B2B businesses as well, because that's another one that people say, oh, no, it doesn't work you know, for us. We're a B2B business. Mm. No, absolutely. And I think, you know, today is, is a sort of example of that. I think, you know, you can find someone who is a trusted voice of authority in a particular space. So, um, you know, let's say you're, uh, let's, let's use an accountant as an example, because I think people go, well, that's a tough one. How are we going to do influence mm. marketing accountant? And you can go, okay, well, who's our target audience? It's business owners, um, probably, or um, CFOs, maybe, depending on the size of your and the type of accounting services you offer. Mm. Who is the trusted voice of authority when they're trying to decide which accountant to use? where are they going to get that information? They're probably going to look on Google and they're probably looking for star reviews. They're probably asking their friends for recommendations. And they're probably looking for someone who has experience in their particular field. And they want someone who's obviously going to do a really good job and is very probably very transparent. And then you go, okay, well, how can I get in front of those right decision makers? What's going to be the right platform? And how could I build trust with them that we're going to do a really good job? And how can I be transparent about our fees? And you go, well, okay, maybe we could run a webinar. Maybe we could create some mm. content, some downloadable eBooks for these people about top 10 tax tips that you need to know in the lead up to tax time. Um, maybe you could host an event. People always forget about the events for influencer marketing. You could host an event and you could have three really amazing influential speakers come and speak at the event that is about um, you know, tax updates, R&D grant updates, things like that. And you could have those people share it on their social media channels, whether it's LinkedIn or Instagram or um, saying, hey, I'm speaking at this conference. Why don't you come down? They're going to attract their customers. That's going to build trust. And that's all influence marketing. So definitely yeah. services businesses. Love that. And have you got any examples, so recent examples where you kind of, you, well, obviously you've got loads of examples, but what are some of your kind of favorite examples recently where you've used influencers and the brand's got amazing results from it? Yeah, absolutely. And I think um, the key thing is thinking about how you track those results. Um, we always recommend to brands that you use Bitly links um, so you can see the increase in traffic. You can give each individual influencer a, a Bitly link that they can share with their audience. You can give them discount codes. Um, you know, you would see them all the time on Instagram, like 10, 20. So you can see how many people converted at checkout. 
Um, and so of course you're going to see those, but then you also want to just think about this is all top of funnel things as well. So there's going to be lots of different touch points that a consumer goes through. When I see HelloFresh for the first time, am I going to sign up straight away and make that decision? Probably not. I'm going to have lots of different touch points about your business. So there's brand awareness. There's So some of the ones that we've seen, HelloFresh is a client of ours. They've done incredibly well using influencer marketing. Um, they mm. do a mix of paid and contra. Um, they work with over 100 influencers every month. Um, obviously, they're a huge business with lots of scale and resources to be able to do that. But um, And it has performed incredibly well. It makes great content for them that they then repurpose for advertising. Um, it solves their uh, the, the sort of building of trust um, that they need. Um, and it obviously generates reach and awareness to new audiences. It's very hard for them to reach on other channels. So um, they do incredibly well through using influencer marketing. Yeah, awesome. Just just talk through, I'm just to pick up on something you said about paid and contra, because I think a lot of people, um, you know, go into it going, we've got to pay for it. And that's a cost to the business. And how do I justify that? But there's also the contra side of it, which is huge. I mean, well, that's what hashtag gifted is about. Yeah. Right? It's, it's, yeah. yeah. So just talk us through that. And I always think um, any campaign should be mutually beneficial for both sides. Mm. So um, there's definitely times where maybe you're like, look, I have to pay this person. That is that is what it is. Maybe you're paying for the size of their audience. Obviously, at a certain point, people will just charge. Um, or maybe it's just a product that is a bit of a tough sell. We, we do work with feminine hygiene products, for example, and not a lot of people just organically want to go on social media and talk about period products, for example. So True. there's going to be times where, look, payment is payment, um, and that's okay. Um, but there are so many ways that you can put together really enticing contra offers to people. Um, and if you can find people who already are excited about trying your product, and it's the whole reason that we built Hash Gifted, is if we can find people who are already really excited about trying that product or whoever who are already use it in their lives and are like, of course, I love this. I already use it. Of course, I'd love to tell people about it. Then that is fantastic. And you can put together really amazing, we call them bundles, like Think about how you can make a really enticing bundle. Um, I always use the example of like, okay, you're a tea brand. Maybe your tea is only worth $12.95 and it's sold in Woolworths. But you can make an amazing bundle that's a beautiful teapot, beautiful teacups, a serving tray, and you can send that out to influencers. And they're going to make amazing content for you. They're going to feel really valued. They're going to be really excited to share it with their audience and promote your brand. And you're really going to have built a beautiful ongoing relationship with that person. So mm -hmm. I definitely think, yes, there will be times where you need to pay to play, um, but there are definitely times where you can do contra engagements as well. Yeah. So for instance, I've got a butchers I work with. Um, so if they were a butchers, they could send out a gourmet box with recipes in it and get them to play with actually making the food and shoot some video content that goes along with that. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, and I can okay. just imagine it, like a really cool delivery, maybe mm. with a chopping knife and some accessories and, you know, serving plate to serve a roast on or something would be amazing. And imagine the content they could make with that. Yeah, yeah. You've got a fun job. You really have. <laughs> um, so I wanted to bring on... Um, Mandy and Anthony Dean, they are the founders. I've worked with them for some time now. They recently launched their business. They're the founders of a brand called Salty Cheeks. Um, you will, you've already had a look at their yes, website. We're just gonna, we're just gonna bring them on. Hello, hi, how are you? This is Mandy and Anthony. So they do paddle pads. So why don't you introduce yourself and explain Salty Cheeks, the brand. Hi, I'm Mandy and this is Anthony um, and we are Salty Cheeks. So what Salty Cheeks are, are female specific paddling pants with uh, an inbuilt pocket in the rear where you can actually insert three different levels of seat pads that we have. So if you have problems paddling, get the sore sit bone grind, these will alleviate that and you'll be paddling in comfort. Um, they've been very popular so far that now all the men are asking us when we're doing a men's line of pants. So and here's the men's line. And here, here they are. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So um, we're now developing a men's range as well. Um, but there was a gap in the market. Um, a lot of the paddling pants that are on the market are um, unisex pants. So you had to buy, uh, buy an extra small men's pants um, in black or navy. And there's no colour, there's no fun. So um, bring on salty cheeks. And also I suffered a lot of problems paddling, having pain in the bum and um, issues with my sit bones grinding on the seat and couldn't find anything to alleviate that. So 
uh, our salty cheeks got developed. I love it. No, congratulations. And yes, I obviously have had a little stalk of your website and um, and congratulations. I know how hard it is getting a business to this place and you've obviously identified a great gap in the market. So um, kudos to you. Um, and I did have a little stalk of your um, socials as well and some of the um, creators that you've been working with so far, which is really awesome. So um, a few little thoughts from my side. Um, firstly, I think you've done an amazing job of picking. A lot of people get very caught up in um, what I would call like vanity metrics and looking at influencers and going, oh, you know, this person's a fitness influencer, which you go, oh, that's kind of aligned with what we do. And they've got 50,000 followers and I'm going to, you know, get them to promote my product. What I think you've done really well is get super targeted and not get caught up in those in those vanity metrics. You've gone, who are the real key voices of authority in our space? Um, and just for everyone playing along at home, they had worked with two really awesome female um, paddlers um, and they didn't have a super high social following, but I did a little analysis on their accounts. They had really high um, engagement rates, which was awesome. Um, so one was about 3%, the other was over 6%, which is amazing. Anywhere between one and 3% is about standard in um, on Instagram. Um, so both had really good engagement rates. I don't know if you checked that before you use them, but you know, fantastic work. Um, and they had also, um, really good Australian audience, which is in very important. Um, obviously I'm sure you can ship overseas, but I think probably for now you're like, how do we build an Australian audience? So looking at those things before you worked with an influencer, whether or not you did, or it was just pure fluke is, um, either way it's worked out. So, um, which is fantastic. Um, what I would say is. It's really great that you've, you've obviously um, found ways to speak to um, a very core target audience. So people who are already paddlers and probably already quite deep in the community and are probably following these people. How do you get to that next ring outside of that? The people who are maybe just casual paddlers and are maybe not following those people on Instagram, for example. And then thinking through again, I was thinking of myself if I was your customer and I was thinking, who would I go to? If I was like having this problem, who would be the person I would trust to give me advice on that? And it's probably whoever taught me to paddle. It's probably the, the teachers at the schools. Um, it's probably the place that I bought my, um, my kayak or paddle from. Um, so how can you work with those people in your community um, to, to have them promote the product? So it, again, it's probably a contra arrangement or um, could be some sort of affiliate deal that you find with these people and you say, hey, you know, like, you're the person that's going to be giving advice to these people every single day. Um, it's, you, know, it, you may not even be on social media. It might be face-to-face. -face. Or how could you host an event and have one of these fantastic, amazing women who are in the Paralympian, for example, how could you have them come and speak and, and maybe give a tutorial and, and, um, and have a paddle day out on the harbour, for example, and really build some community and go, okay, we can have all of these aspiring paddlers or people who have never tried paddling before and want to come on and have a little bit of an experience, learn from someone who's an expert in the space. You build that positive brand halo around your brand that says we're associated with this person. We get to meet all of these great people. You get to collect their email addresses to market to later. And you're going to create amazing content on the day. So I think, you know, doing some sort of maybe slightly less conventional things um, like that could be really good. Um, and then I think definitely going a little bit more broader with your influencer marketing. So thinking about, well, you probably have some data now on who the target audience is that are buying the product in terms of their age, um, their location. And then and you can, I, what I do, go through and have a bit of a Google of our customers as well. What, what, who are they? You can find a lot of information about people online these days. Go and have a look. What else are they interested in? You know, are they, do they also go to F45? Do they um, have kids at school? And then have a think about what other influences outside of specifically paddling influences could you use that those people are likely to follow on one of their social channels. So maybe it's a foodie influencer, maybe it's a, a mummy influencer, um, I don't know, without sort of knowing a little bit more about the, the customer subsets, um, but finding sort of aligned industries that you could tie into and then thinking about creative ways to work with those people um, as well. My Would only you thing, oh, sorry, you go. Oh, sorry, Taryn, I was just going to say, would you then see that as doing some sort of brand collaboration with uh, another brand, like a, um, a sunscreen brand that doesn't uh, mess up your clothes and things like that uh, for paddlers? Is that a good idea or is that something that then detracts from your own brand? 
I would wait until your own brand is a little bit more mature first um, so that you're not diluting the messaging. Um, once you've got a brand that's, you know, really established and everyone knows, and um, then you can definitely start looking at doing collaborations. Um, I think just at this stage, while you're still new, I would make it just a single um, brand focus on any sort of influencer marketing that you do. But I think, for example, if you find out that everyone, I don't know, loves Tan Hennessy, for example, and, and lots of your customers are women, they're over 40, they love her, they follow her, they were Celeste Barber or whatever, and they go, oh, she's fantastic. Maybe it's a case of, okay, well, we're going to pay her to, to come on a paddle day with our um, Paralympian and we're going to shoot some content with them together and she's going to talk about the brand and she's going to show, we're going to showcase how fun it is and how funny it is and how this makes her experience better. And we're going to give her great content that isn't salesy, that can really speak to her audience. Um, and it's all about testing and iterating and learning as well. Um, and of course, you're never going to see that, as I said, sort of direct line from she posts a piece of content. We see this huge uptick in sales um, necessarily. Um, but it's all about sort of building that brand awareness, especially when you're new getting out there in front of new audiences and, um, and yet building that brand awareness. Okay. okay. Fantastic. And the only thing I would say about your own social channels is um, I would think about how you use um, your story highlights. Yeah. Um, and I would go through and have a think about what are the common, I always ask our customer service girls, what are the common questions that customers come to us and ask about? Mm -hmm. And how can we use our story highlights to answer those? So it might be like questions on sizing, or it might be questions on the different padding type or whatever it might be. And using those Instagram story highlights to be able to answer all of those so that before people click the link in bio, they can straight away go to stories and see, okay, sizing, and they can see the measurements and they can see people trying them on and the different bits, um, anything like that. So uh, try and answer all of those in the story highlights. And then just think about um, looking at your, especially with Instagram, looking at your Instagram feed and thinking, how can I make this tell a cohesive story? Um, there's a brand, Sarah and Sebastian Jewelry, I think do it really beautifully, obviously very different kind of target audience, but they have product photos, then they have beautiful interviews that they've done with really interesting people, eco warriors and artists and designers and things. So they sort of have built this really beautiful kind of, it's not all just about us telling a story about buy our jewelry or anything. They've kind of got a mix of stills and carousels and videos and so just thinking about how can we use our page to tell a story about who our customer is who our partners are the manufacturing process the design process getting people to I guess know a little bit more about you and what you stand for and um yeah building the um, I was just going to add and maybe you could even use your influencers to do some of those frequently asked questions and yes. answer them for you because that makes it mo so much more engaging than just Absolutely. you kind of I mean you're engaging Mandy obviously and you Anthony <laughs> sorry but it makes it so much more engaging than than just you responding to a question so maybe all yeah. right awesome that is has that been helpful and uh, Anthony and Mandy I always call it and in Anthony <laughs> <laughs> yeah definitely thank you so much for all of that Awesome, yeah. awesome. Right, well, we're going to take a few questions. Um, I'm conscious of time, so we're just going to jump on into the questions and take a few questions. All right, so um, how do you determine if an influencer content creator has genuine followers? That's a really good one. Very good one. Um, it, as, a, as a very, if you don't have a deep dive tool that can show you you know, a lot more granular information, um, which I probably, if you're not doing it, you know, as a regular ongoing thing, I wouldn't invest in one because they're usually very expensive really easily. Um, if they have a good engagement rate, um, then that's generally a tick. Go and have a look at the comments that they get from their followers. So again, is it just lots of like fire emojis or like, yes, great photo, great photo, tick, 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 which can mean one, they have fake followers or two, they're an engagement pod. An engagement pod is where a group of influencers will get together usually on a WhatsApp group and someone will do a post and they'll copy the link to that post and they'll say, can everyone go on and comment on my photo? And then they'll all say like, nice photo or like, great or whatever um, to increase the engagement rate of their post. But obviously those people are not really going to go and buy your product. So you don't want to see that. Um, and a easy, really easy way to tell that as well is look across three or four posts and is it the same people commenting all the same times? Um, and of awesome. course, you can always ask the influencer as well to send through a screenshot of their um, audience analytics, which was the Oh, yeah, that's a really good idea. Yeah. Show, and, yeah. Where and, they um, just just on that, would um, would you, if there was a plugin, which one would you use? If there was a tool that you could use, which one would you use? 
it's so hard because they're so they like, vary so much in price um yeah Pipe Auditor, Flanks is not too bad. Um, Aspire, Tagger is amazing, but very, very expensive. I want to say it's okay. like around a month or something crazy, but right. um, also does social listening and things like that. Um, obviously, the right fit does have, um, you can pay to get analytics, which gives you audience insight breakdowns, like what country their followers are based in and things like that. So, um, but yeah, you, you and you can always ask an influencer, and just say, can you just send me screenshots from your Instagram or your TikTok so I can see where your followers are based? Um, yeah. Awesome. And- What's the general cost for influencers? Uh, Joe from uh, Grumpy Bums has been quoted a hundred dollars to six k. It's a that's a huge range. <laughs> And unfortunately, it is a little bit of the wild, wild west out there. And I think that comes from two things. It comes from influencers not really knowing what to quote and brands maybe not giving super clear briefs. So I think the first thing to do is always put together a really clear ask. Like we want one in-feed post, we want two stories, um, and we want link in your bio for two weeks, for example. And I would always ask for those things to be quoted separately and then together as a bundle. So then you can say, okay, well, actually, we'll drop the link in bio, we'll drop the stories or whatever. Um, I'll send you through a link afterwards, but on the TRF website, um, or you can just go online and then you can see there's heaps of these like little pricing guides on generally what you should pay for influencers within a particular range. Um, And also don't be afraid to go back to an influencer and ask for more clarity. So you can, I do this all the time when we're costing campaigns for clients and I'll go back to a creator and say, oh, like, okay, your your quote is $6,000, but you only have X number of followers. And I've got two other quotes for someone with the same number of followers and it's half the price. Could you help me understand? Could you help? Well, did, I, did I miscommunicate something or is there a reason? And they might say, well, actually, yes, it's because I you know, have a blue verified tick or I have a really high engagement rate or I'm on this particular TV show. So I charge more for those things. Um, mm, okay. I obviously have more of a voice of authority. So, um, and- awesome. and any good creator will be very happy having those conversations and and be really honest with them about what your budget is too and say, look, this is the kind of budget I've got allocated. What could we do with that kind of fee? Yeah, awesome. Awesome, Taryn. And I'm so sorry, we never get to all of the questions. We always run out of time because there's so much gold in these sessions. What we will do is take the questions. I'll send them to Taryn. And if you get a chance, Taryn, to answer any of them, then maybe we could feed them back in the weekly email. Selvi, if that works. Um, thank you so much for your time that has been absolutely amazing I've got so much gold out of it um, and I'm sure everyone else has can everyone just give a thank you in the chat to Taryn for giving up her time to educate (laughs) you guys on how to use influencers I know everyone's got some gold out of that Um, thank you so much all right so Thank you to Taryn. Thanks to the City of Sydney. Next week, we've got the outstanding Kylie Captain, a proud Gamilaroi woman, educator and author, who will be exploring finding power in your voice and story. Um, Please, please, please fill out the survey. The last thing I want to touch on is the City of Sydney have um, have a business growth course, which is an innovation program called Ready, Set, Go. Um, it's open to 20 motivated businesses across the city of Sydney. It's a 12 week accelerator. I've actually mentored on one of these. I think I'm hiding in this picture somewhere and they are amazing. If I say so myself, um, you get one-to-one mentoring, boot camp, workshops, fortnightly online sessions, 100% free. So if you're looking for that extra kick for your business, kickstart, kick drive, re-energize, this is a great place to be. Um, what else have I got to do? We'll be sending a link to the survey. Rachel will stick that in the chat. Thank you to Rachel, Selvi, Katrina, who do all of the wonderful stuff in the background. And thank you to Taryn and the City of Sydney. That's awesome. I look forward to seeing you all next week. Taryn, thanks so much. I really thank appreciate you so your much. time. Awesome thanks, work. Kelly. Always a pleasure. Thanks for sharing. Bye. Bye.